long-lived assets and IFRS, cost model and revaluation model. The cost model is the most commonly used valuation method for property, plant and equipment in Canada. It's the one you learn in introductory financial accounting and probably you know it well. Why is it the most commonly used method of valuing property, plant and equipment in Canada? Because it's verifiable and therefore it meets the requirement for faithful representation, also called representational faithfulness, in the conceptual framework. However, historical cost likely does not reflect the current value of the entity's property, plant and equipment, and as such, it's less relevant for users' decision making. There is therefore a trade-off with regards to qualitative characteristics under the conceptual framework using the cost model. Under the cost model, property, plant and equipment is measured at cost, less accumulated depreciation and any impairment losses. ASPE requires the use of the cost model exclusively. However, IFRS allows companies a choice between the cost model or an alternative method called the revaluation model. So when can the revaluation model be used? Well, under IFRS only. That's because ASPE only allows the cost model. Under the revaluation model, property, plant and equipment and intangibles whose fair value can be measured reliably are valued at fair value less subsequent accumulated depreciation and subsequent impairment losses. Why would IFRS allow the revaluation model? Because it overcomes the drawbacks of the cost model, namely its lack of relevance. By allowing the revaluation model, IFRS's goal is to gain higher relevance in the financial statements. There's a few things we need to unpack here in this description. First, what is fair value? There's a number of valuations that speak to fair value, but right now we're going to assume it's the price that would be received if the asset was sold. What does measured reliably mean? Generally, this means that there is an active secondary market where the fair value of the assets can be determined. An example would be, say, used cars, which have a very active secondary market. If I want to know the value of a 10-year-old Chrysler Dodge Caravan with option package B, I can go onto the internet. There's an active secondary market and I can determine its fair value. If an asset's fair value can't be determined reliably, then the asset must be recorded using the cost model. Note that the revaluation model can be used for intangible assets. However, intangible assets rarely have an active secondary market. Therefore, although intangible assets can be valued using the revaluation model, if they don't meet the requirement for a reliable fair value, they must be recorded using the cost model. Finally, if an asset is valued using the revaluation model, how often must the asset be revalued? Revaluation is not required annually, but revaluation is required when the carrying amount is materially different than the asset's fair value. What is materially different? Well, materiality is based on professional judgment. If an asset's value changes rapidly, annual revaluation may be required. Finally, if a company adopts the revaluation model, they must apply the model consistently to all assets in the same class. What does that mean? A class is a group of assets with similar natures. Therefore, if an entity decides to use the revaluation model for land, then all land owned by the company must be valued using the revaluation model. Entities must be consistent with regards to the revaluation model within each class of property, plant and equipment. However, entities can choose to use the revaluation model for some classes of assets for example, land, and then use the cost model for other classes, such as equipment or buildings. The easiest way to understand the revaluation model is to do a demonstration. And that's what I'll do in the next video.